many students. I'm so excited to be your artist in residence this year. I was a student in Burns and remember taking classes just like this. I've been an artist all my life and I'm excited to show you some of the techniques that I've learned. Today we're going to learn a little bit about color theory, a few different ways to work with watercolor, and then we're going to add some really fun bird feet to tie into your lesson. I use watercolor in my paintings and I've learned how fun it really can be. I can't wait to show you some of these techniques. Come on over and we'll get started. To get started, we're going to talk about color theory um, and the color wheel. So on my right over here, I've got my color wheel already set up. And um, first we're going to talk about primary colors. So these are colors that we all know that are um, our reds, our yellows, and our blues. So those colors make up our primary colors. Um, those colors, uh, when combined um, in sets, make our secondary colors. So red and yellow or red and yellow make orange yellow and blue make green and blue and red make purple so those are combinations of our primary colors so our primary colors are the ones that um, you can use those to make any color you want um, they're, they're great uh, to make brown too if you combine all of your primary colors you're going to make brown Another way to make brown is also to add two complementary colors together because your complementary colors are opposite on your color wheel. You have red and green, and if you remember, green and uh, is a combination of blue and yellow, so together those would make brown as well. So our three sets of complementary colors are red and green, orange and blue, and yellow and purple. So they're absolutely opposite on the color wheel. Another thing to think about when we're looking at our color wheel are warm and cool colors. So not only are they opposite, but they're actually right next to each other along the color wheel. So we have our warm colors that are red, orange, and yellow. We have them over here. And then we have our cool colors that are green, blue, and purple. And those are on the opposite side of the color wheel. So this is our basic color wheel. Um, and things to think about, especially when we're watercoloring, is um, we don't want to mix our complementary colors together or put all three primary colors together. The, that way, we're gonna we don't want to make brown. So, it's a um, because it's a water-based um, medium. We don't want to mix um, all those colors together. So, I'll show you some ways not to do that. Um, so, for some of the advanced students. Um, to get more in depth in color theory, if you're interested, um, there's a few things you can look up, and I'm going to actually add a link to um, to a video that shows these a little more in depth. But things like hue and saturation, and tint and value um, are important with color theory, as well as opacity and transparency. So um, I might use some of those terms. Um, in our in our uh, lesson but uh, there is a video that we're going to post that shows um, a little bit more in depth um, about those so all right um, thanks and we're going to move on all right so now that you know just a little bit about color theory and the color wheel we're going to move on so we're going to talk about what we need for our um, watercolor project so first we actually need um, our watercolor paper which uh, watercolor paper is a little bit different. Um, it is not like normal paper because the, the water actually pools on the top so we can add our pigments um, from our watercolor palette. So um, first we need some nice watercolor paper. Um, for this, uh, for basic watercolor, you just need a nice clean bit of water. You need a watercolor palette and then you need some brushes. Um, I also recommend having a, um, a paper towel just to dab your brush off um, if, if needed. Um, for our techniques that we're learning today, um, we're also going to incorporate some salt. So I have some Epsom salt here, but you can use pretty much any type of salt that you want, um, as well as a straw 
and a um, sheet protector. So this is just like any normal, you know, sheet protector that you have at school. So um, I have a couple examples. Um, we're gonna do three different um, kind of techniques today. And I've got three examples here. So the first um, is a wet on wet technique. Um, and then I actually incorporate some salt into it. So um, this technique's really fun because uh, it pulls the, the color in uh, wherever you put the salt. So it, it leaves some really neat, almost tie-dye um, textures to it. The second te technique we're gonna look at is the sheet protector technique. So we actually put our watercolor on the sheet and apply it to our paper. So that allows us to have some really fun kind of shapes that we wouldn't normally be able to get um, by applying uh, water onto our paper. As well as our third technique is going to be um, uh, doing a background uh, blend of yellow and orange. And then on top of that, we're actually gonna um, put watercolor and then use a straw to kind of blow the watercolor around to get um, some really neat textures and fun, fun um, color blends. And then lastly, and you know, the, the more important part, I guess not more important part, but the fun part of this is we're gonna add some, uh, some bird footprints. So these are all footprints of animals or birds that are in our area. Um, you know, we have our ibis, our white-faced ibis, our goose, our crow, we've got a killdeer, which is a little tiny, little small bird, um, ducks, we have great horned owls, which are awesome animals. Um, we have blue herons, eagles, and pheasants. So these are just some of the few footprints that we're gonna look at um, through the lesson. So um, I'm really excited to get started and show you how to do this. So let's move on. All right, so we've got our watercolor paper. So uh, I'm gonna pick a big brush um, because I wanna make sure that I am gonna get um, the most water coverage for my paper. So we're doing the wet on wet technique, which is the um, the one that I previously did with purple and blue and um, red. So I'm gonna actually dip my brush in and get a bunch of water on there. And I've already outlined um, where I want my water, um, where my artwork to go. So um, you don't have to do this, but for me it just gives a nice spot to um, stop at visually. So I'm actually going to first paint my whole area with water. So what that does is it lays down a really nice area for me to apply my colors to. So I'm gonna, sometimes you have to duck your head down just to see where the water actually is. Kind of move where you are to see that. So we'll get all our water saturate or our paper saturated where we want it. And then next is the fun part. So we're gonna open up our watercolor palette and we can see that we have a bunch of, um, you know, I have owned just a watercolor palette like you guys have in school. So um, we're gonna stick to our color theory and think about what colors we wanna use. So um, I'm gonna stick right now to my warm color palette where I'm going to put reds and oranges and yellows on um, my paper. So I'm gonna get some water and I'm gonna put it on my palette. And we wanna make sure that we really saturate that um, watercolor um, so that uh, we get a lot of paint on our paintbrush. So we want to have some really bright colors for this. So we're going to start adding color just wherever we want. And I've got quite a bit, if you can see on my paintbrush, I have quite a bit of paint on there. So. Once I have a bit on there, I'm actually gonna make sure I really rinse out my brush because we wanna not contaminate our other colors on our palette. So, I'm gonna go over and grab some orange. 
get it really good. I mean, you can always um, clean up your palette afterwards with a, a um, paper towel just to make sure your colors really don't run. It's kind of hard to keep them from running sometimes, but we're going to add some more nice bright color. Rinse our brush out again. So we're going to change to yellow now. So we're going to go to our yellow. Get it nice and saturated with water so that we've got lots of color. And we're going to add some more yellow. So depending on how, uh, how you'd like your, your painting to look, if you want it to be a little lighter and brighter, you can always add your light colors first. That way your light colors are going to be the majority of your painting versus I started with red, which is the darkest kind of color. Um, and, and that's kind of, you know, making the overall color a little darker than normal. So next, we're also, uh, we're going to grab our salt and we're just going to sprinkle it on wherever we want. So this technique needs a little bit of time. So we're actually going to let that dry. So next we're going to move on to our uh, sheet protector. Um, technique. So sit back and uh, either let this dry or um, start on another one. So moving on from our wet on wet technique um, and salt technique, we're going to do our sheet protector technique. So this one's really fun. We actually use some plastic. So you can use cling wrap, saran wrap, anything like that. Uh, but I just felt like sheet, sheet protectors would be really easy, um, you know, easily accessible in school. So um, this for this one, <clears throat> we actually leave our paper dry. We don't put any water on the paper. What we do <clears throat> is we, um, we actually put our pigment directly into our um, our pal on our palette um, and start getting some paint. So for this one, I'm gonna stick with colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So they're not necessarily warm colors or cool colors, but yellow, green, and blue are all right next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm actually going to grab all three of those colors and do a background for this one. So first we're going to grab our green and I'm actually just going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to look at how big my, uh, my piece of paper is. And I'm going to just do almost the same type of technique that I did with the um, with the, the salt technique where we just kind of dab on color wherever we, we want. And make sure in between colors you definitely wash your brush just to get out all the, the paint. So we're going to go to some blue. more water just to get make sure we get all the paint out we can and you want to have some nice globs of, of, of paint um, like watered down paint on these or else it's not going to transfer so I'm going to throw some blue on there and then lastly, we're going to put some, make sure you clean out your brush really good between blue and yellow because blue and yellow makes green. We don't want that. So we're going to grab a bunch of this yellow and throw that on there too. All right. So we've got our colors on here. Rinse our brush out. And this part's a little hard, a little tricky sometimes, but we're actually going to flip it over. So um, we take our sheet protector and we flip it right over onto our paper. And then we the fun part happens where we get to kind of move this around and make some cool textures and patterns and colors. Mix that all around. So that is kind of the basic part of that technique 
And then for me, I really like um, to add on some fun um, little dots. So um, another technique that I kind of incorporate into this is I grab a smaller brush and I grab some of these colors. So I'll grab a big glob of this, this paint. And then I actually use my finger and a paintbrush to splatter it on there. So that way we get some really cool colors in between our other colors. You don't need to go crazy, but it's kind of a fun way to add a little bit of extra color, especially when you have some spots that are pretty white. And don't forget, again, to make sure you really rinse your brush out every time between. Because that's what makes sure that all your colors stay perfect. Oh, woo, that one was got a lot of water in that one. All right. So that is our sheet protector technique um, with some splatter paint. So, and that is a, uh, a wet on dry technique. So we were going to move on. All right. So you'll see in a little bit that I went a little crazy with my colors and I got them splattered. So make sure you be careful of that. So you can see over here that I actually got some blue already on my and green and yellow on my painting. So we're going to move our uh, wet on dry and sheen sheet protector uh, painting over and we are going to do our last technique. So our last technique, which I think I'm going to use some cool colors on, so I'm going to use my purple, blue, and green on, um, we're going to do the straw technique. So that is our last and final technique. So I'm going to use my big brush, which you can use any size brush, it doesn't matter, it's just, it's a little easier for me to do the instruction and get the, the water on the paper <laughs> faster. All right, so as you can see, since I've got some, what happens when you add watercolor or water over watercolor, it actually can move the paint. So even after it's already on there. All right, so this last technique is also a wet on wet technique, which means I'm putting water on the watercolor paper and then I'm adding uh, pigment to it instead of just painting straight on dry paper. So first we're going to start <coughs> and um, I think I'm going to do a, a gradient between green and blue. So we're going to grab our green right here. and I'm actually going to start at one side and I'm going to put some paint on and kind of pull it towards the middle. So what we want is the very edge to have a lot of paints and then the bottom to not have as much. And we're going to go in Our blue, and we're going to do kind of the opposite. So we're going to start at the bottom. All right, we had a little bit of technical difficulties here, but um, I just added the blue at the bottom, and we're pulling it up like we did with the green, but towards the top. So we get this nice blending effect between the blue and the green. And as you can see, I put quite a bit of water on my page. So that's a little bit too much. So I'm actually gonna grab my paper towel, which is over here. And I'm just gonna kind of suck up some of this water a little bit, just to make sure we don't have too much or it's gonna pool on our paper. All right. So 
So this one, we're actually gonna have to let dry before we start the next step. So I'll see you in a few. So once our paper is totally dry, um, this is the only technique that you're gonna have to wait um, for it to your paper to dry all the way. Um, we're actually going to add um, some, some more color on top, but in little dots, um, similarly to what we've been doing, but um, then we're gonna use a straw to um, kind of push the color where we want it to go or wherever it wants to go. And that's kind of the fun part about this technique. So it makes some neat shapes. So we're gonna add some, make sure we've got enough color or water um, in our color, because we kind of want this second layer to be really wet um, with lots, lots of water, just because you want there to be enough um, for the straw to actually blow the water around. So we're gonna add some more here. Make sure you really wash your brush out between. That's green over here. All right. So I just found a straw that my daughter had laying around, but I think you guys have normal straws, so they won't sound as silly as mine does. So I apologize. But what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna blow around our our um, water on our page. So as we go, we can add some more color just to you know. If there wasn't enough somewhere, we can always add more. That's the fun part about watercolor. So we just add more, do it again. And it's fun because sometimes the colors will actually mix together when you're doing this. Alright, so we have a fun background. Can I blow some more of those around? Alright, so next we're gonna um, let this dry and uh, I think we've, we have some salt to take off on our, our first one we tried and then we're gonna do our bird footprints. Alright, so this was our last technique. So we're gonna let this dry completely. Um, and I just wanted to show you, so this is almost dry, but we're still going to let some of this salt kind of dry on here. There's some spots that still are a little bit wet, so we're going to let that dry. We're going to move on to our, um, putting our, our, uh, feet on our pictures. So, we don't need our watercolor anymore. I'm going to put that away. And we are going to move on to starting to learn how to draw some of these, these feet. So, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, I'm just going to start with uh, just a marker. You can use any kind of marker, any color of marker, whatever you want. Um, it helps if it's a little bit of a fine point marker, just so that uh, it's a little easier to, you know, make the correct marks that you want. But um, there are a few birds that are personally my favorite. Um, that I would love to do. Um, I showed you guys a few. I showed you about nine different um, feet uh, prints that we can look at. But I think personally my favorite are ducks. I love every kind of duck. They're just the cutest animals. So I'm actually going to do two duck feet. So to start our duck feet, um, we're actually going to make almost like a U mix between a U and a V, I would say. Um, and we're going to add some kind of fun little um, dark ends on it. So duck feet also have like a fun little um, little toe in the back um, of how they, you know, when they push into the ground, they actually have this cool little toe that, that shows up. And then they also have a middle toe 
And then we're going to do two little swoops for the webbing on their feet because they have webbed feet. So that's one duck foot, and I would say that is the left duck foot. So we're going to make a right duck foot. So the difference between the two would be the direction that this little toe is going in right here. So we're going to make our little V U shape with our little toe on the back. And then we're going to add our little middle toe. And that one's pointing towards the other one. And then we have our little webbed feet. And ducks actually have some little claws that sometimes show up in their footprints. So we're going to add those. So I know I showed you guys some ones that had multiples of duck footprints, but it's kind of up to you of what you want to do with your picture. So you can do just a single set of prints um, for each type of bird, or you could do a bunch of different ones. So we're going to move on and I'll do another set and show you guys how to do another type of bird footprint here in just a second. All right, so this was our um, sheet protector um, and splatter um, technique. So we're going to move on to another type of bird footprint. So we'll move this guy over here. And our salt one is actually not dry yet. So I'm going to do um, our cool um, straw technique next. Um, I'm going to work on this one. So next, um, let's try out the eagle um eagle town like feet they um eagles are predatory birds and so they have um pretty long talons that show up um in their footprints so first we're going to start with their i usually like to start with the the middle toe when i work with on these bird footprints um and they have a couple joints just like you and i do um on their fingers so their middle finger is kind of their longest one. They're, but birds don't have five. They have, um, in this case, um, three and then a back, you know, toe. So um, not like us, similar to us, but not like us. So they have similar joints, but look a little bit different. So when I make these bird feet, sometimes I like to just Alright, so we're done with our eagle footprint, so we're actually going to move on, um, and with our salt technique, uh, what we have to do is we actually have to brush all that salt off, so I'm going to brush off my salt into a garbage can, over off screen, get all the salt off of it. And as you can see too, um, I know I mentioned earlier that I sprinkled some a little, I went a little crazy on my um, sheet protector um, technique and got some some ink on here, but or some uh, watercolor on here. But if you guys are doing only one technique, you shouldn't have that problem. So as you can see, it's kind of cool. We've got like a really neat technique, um, like a texture aerial quality that the salt gives to the the paint. So we. Um, I, I was going to use a marker, but um, there's also, you know, you can use colored pencils, you can use any kind of, um, you know, marker, anything like that, pencil. So we've got warm colors, so let's maybe do a dark brown. So we'll pick a dark brown. And I absolutely love uh, great horned owls, so... Um, one of our um, footprints is a great horned owl, so we'll do our great horned owl footprint. So they have really big, big toes. So actually, kind of thicker than most most other um, birds have. Um, so we make kind of a thick toe outline, color it in. 
And they're also a raptor, so they've got, or they're a bird of prey, excuse me, so they have some really nice talons that kind of show up on their footprint. So every time I draw these, I always think that a lot of these footprints just look just like dinosaurs. <laughs> Channel your inner dinosaur foot drawer. Alright, so we have our feet and then we're going to put our claws on. Alright, so now we have got our Great Horn Owl footprint on our salted uh, watercolor technique. We've got our eagle with our straw technique and we have our duck feet with our sheet protector technique. So these are our three techniques. Um, I'm super excited for you guys to try these out and figure out what works and what you know what's fun and just to um, you know become better artists. So Thanks guys, I really appreciate you guys letting me uh, be your artist in residence this year and uh, I can't wait to see what you guys create. Have a good day, bye.